we lose our loved ones. And so in these moments now and in the weeks and months ahead, we pray please bring comfort and mercy to us as we remember and share fondly all that dawn was to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I will be reading now the obituary of, of Don Thompson. Donald Edgar Thompson, 86, longtime Arthur County rancher, died Wednesday, January 17, 2018, in Centennial Park Retirement Village at North Platte. Don was born March 2, 1931, at Sutherland, the son of Orville D. and Lena Kruger Thompson. He lived all his life in Arthur County, attending grade school at Center Valley District No. 12. He graduated from Arthur High School in 1948, and on December 31, 1950, Don married <coughs> Helen at Napa, California. They lived near Duck Lake in Arthur County until moving to Arthur in 2012. Don helped his dad ranch until his death, and then continued to help his mother until her death. Besides ranching, he did electrical and construction work for many years. He was highway superintendent and weed superintendent for Arthur, McPherson, and Logan counties. He was a member at Center Val Valley Baptist Church, and then the Arthur Baptist Church. He and his brother Dean and many others provided a summer Christian ranch camp for several years. He also was a member of the Ogallala Gideon camp for many years. Don enjoyed many hobbies. He was an amateur radio operator for more than 50 years and spoke with people all over the United States and around the world. He enjoyed woodworking, and making tricycle puzzles and giving them away. Survivors include his wife, Helen Thompson, his three sons, Raymond, Tommy, and Billy of Arthur, one daughter, Mary, two brothers, Dean and Jack, seven granddaughters, Jill, Sarah, Martha, Lynn, Rebecca, Rachel, and Dara. Two grandsons, Nathan and Shane, and 12 great-grandchildren, and lots of nieces and nephews. Preceding him in death were his parents, sister and brother-in-law, Evelyn and Robert, a sister-in-law, Doris, and a great-grandson, Gideon Clark. At this time, I would like to invite up um, a few family members uh, for um, some special music.
my nose. Water. Press on. Well, I'm Tommy, second son of Donna and Helen. And I want to thank all of you for coming to Remember Dad. We are grateful for your kindness, and we appreciate the many ways you have shared your love, prayers, and encouragement for all of us, and especially for Mom. When I think about Dad, I think about all the different things he could do. <clears throat> I would say he's best known by the jobs that he has done, often working on his own, sometimes taking Ray, Bill, or me along. Mary and Dave, you get on the jobs too as if many of you here. I'm trying to make a short list that might be on his resume. He was a rancher. And I remember him uh, saying it's the Oleo Ranch. And I said, what does that mean? He says, well, it's one of the cheaper spreads. <laughs> he was a mechanic. He was a pilot. Do any of you remember Dad being a pilot and flying a plane? I remember writing with him one time, <laughs> and Jimmy Snyder, it was Jimmy Snyder's plane, and we had been chasing antelope, which I don't know is legal or not, <laughs> but uh, Dad got airsick, and uh, so he said, ask Jimmy if he could take over, and so he flew for a while, and then said, Jimmy put her down on the ground. And once Dad was feeling better, he got back in. <clears throat> he was also a county commissioner, and, you know, he's pretty proud that his name is on the plaque there as you go in the door. And uh, he was also a printer, printed his what were called QSL cards, what he would send to all of those different amateur radio ap operators around the world and local. He was a water well driller. I know that's what Uncle Jack did and Uncle Dean, and, and we got to go on with some of those things. He was an insurance salesman. Can you imagine my dad being a farm girl insurance salesman? <laughs> Buy it or else. <laughs> he was a general contractor, which is a catch-all for, I can do it. Electrician, TV repairman, telephone lineman, plumber, cemetery sexton, a man who loathed gophers, and a county official. <clears throat> Many of you can look around your home places and see his handiwork. I think of all the things he has designed, built, and repaired over the years, again with help from many of you and from Arthur and the surrounding communities and counties. A long list of houses, garages, shops, barns, churches, roads, signs, machinery, and much more than I can remember. But I remember this. We were doing a remodel. He's doing a remodel for Mrs. Beldora Haythorn. And I was helping him that particular Saturday probably because I was in high school. Dad says, I need you to take the uh, fluorescent lamp off out from under the kitchen cabinet. And so I got Phillips head screwdriver, and I put that screwdriver up there, and it went snap, and dropped my arm back down to the counter. And I turned to Dad. He was working around the corner. I said, Dad, it's hot. And he said, no, it isn't. I said, it's hot. I just got shot. And then he said, okay, I'll go check the breaker. So he flipped a few more breakers. I put the screwdriver back up to take that, nut, uh, that screw out, and it bit me again. Third time is not smart, you know what I'm saying? I said, Dad, it's still hot. He says, it can't be. I said, it's your turn. <laughs> I know how to undo a screw, but I can't, I can't do this. And he stuck the screwdriver up there, and it went snap. He said, well, I guess it was. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> well, whatever he was asked to do, he could do it and most of the time with excellence. He was known for the things he did for relaxation, whether you call it relaxing or not, <clears throat> it's your own opinion. He was an avid ham radio operator, which meant we went to lots of different shows and stuff. And you can see the WA0AES, that was his call sign. He would call himself Don, the dirty old nut, and Able Easy Sugar. That's how he referred to himself with the last three letters. He was a metal artist, painter, historian, 
ever sit through dad's stories? <laughs> it took a while. And story writer. In my book, he was a self-educated genius. It was reflected in most everything he did, including these. These tricycle puzzles that he could shape in a matter of minutes. And wherever he was at with a pair of pliers and wire, after you've had a conversation with Dad, you might have walked away with one. Just for fun, raise your hand if you have one. See around the room. When I talked to Joe Miller, who was one of Dad's great ham friends, Dad said 60 different men replied to the ham net in honor of Dad. And they all... Oh, I tried to make one. Couldn't do it. <laughs> so I put it aside. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> Dad is also remembered for the many ways he served the Lord Jesus. He was a follower of Jesus Christ, a Sunday school teacher, gospel singer, deacon Gideon, and that ranch camp director, and an occasional preacher. I was reading through some of the pages that Dad had sent me for some thoughts for today. And this is some thoughts that he put down in the year 2002. And here in Dad's own words he wrote for his ham friends, Poems for the Morning Ham Learning Chapel, uh, Channel, March 29, 2002. Titled, and it's his title, we just got to accept it for being his <laughs> title, okay? Reminders for Old Bad Dawn. And here he goes. I was conceived in sin. I was born into sin. The second chief of sinners I was put in this place. But because of what happened that first Good Friday day, I'm now a forgiven sinner, for I've been saved by grace. I believe there is no remission of sin without the shedding of innocent blood. <clears throat> because of what he did two millenniums ago, my Savior took care of me good. Capitalized. Well, I'm going to read the scripture verses that Dad was referring to and a few thoughts of my own. And a couple of things I left out. <laughs> I was conceived in sin. I was born into sin. Scripture says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Reference we're all familiar with, perhaps, Romans 3.23. We are all without excuse for our own sin. We inherited our fallen nature from Adam, and because of it, we choose to sin. We are all under the same judgment of God's wrath for those sins. Yet, at the same time, a perfect God in His holy wrath, a perfect God in in His perfect love, He urges us to repent, to turn from our sin, to change our attitude about sin, and realizing, yes, the wages of sin is death. It doesn't change. It can't change. God said it, and that's the way it is. So, we are to turn from our sin with true sorrow, and... <coughs> Come to God in obedience. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 I skip the next line. Because Paul's the chiefest of sinners, and I don't know if Dad was second or God, but he put himself up there in the race. I don't know why. But because of what happened that first Good Friday day, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, this man, Peter writes, and is recorded by Luke in the book of Acts, delivered up by the predetermined plan. This is eternity past that we're talking about here. God's plan. And the foreknowledge of God down to every detail. How it would happen. When it would happen. Why. And who would bring it to 
pass. You nailed to a cross by the hands of godless men and put him to death. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. And Dad can say, I'm a forgiven sinner. For I've been saved by grace. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15.34 All of the Old Testament points to this day For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. No one, not even Don Thompson, can boast on this. It's not based on what you do with your hands, what you do with your mind. It's what you do with your heart. For we are His workmanship, cre <clears throat> created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Don Thompson's life was a plan. Same as yours. It was planned out from eternity past. And then Dad says, I believe there is no remission of sin without the shedding of innocent blood. God the Father, He made Him, that is Jesus the Son, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 And without shedding of blood there is no forgiveness. Hebrews 9.22 since therefore, brethren, we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Going back to that crucifixion day, the Good Friday. Because of what he did two millenniums ago, my Savior took care of me good. And God is good. And God included Don Thompson in that plan. And here's how the life lessons played out. Trust in God. Be a good worker and serve the Lord. Whatever you do, do your work heartily. As for the Lord rather than for men knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. Whatever time you get up in the morning to do your chores, whatever they may be, do them for the glory of God. Say, Lord, here am I. If Don can do it, I can do it. I'm out here to serve you, Lord, by serving these Lock-headed cows. <laughs> and whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Don't spank your horse just because you aren't good enough to write. <laughs> oh, that's what Dad told me. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Through faith in Jesus Christ, Dad confessed his personal sin and accepted the free gift of eternal life that God gives to those who believe in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Here's the promise. This is Jesus' own words. It's better than that little piece of paper that comes with the toaster that says it's good for 90 days, and after that, buy another toaster. <laughs> but Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word, what have you heard today? Songs? This message? God's Word. You hear His Word. And believes Him who sent me. 
That's the hard part. To believe in Jesus. It doesn't come natural. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to come because of a heart that says, I need a Savior, wretch that I am. Lost my place. Okay, there it is. And believes him who sent me, promise has, not maybe, not hope so, can't earn it, don't deserve it, eternal life. And does not come into judgment. No judgment. Understand that? To be in Jesus, there's no judgment. Not the kind of judgment that faces God's wrath. There is some judgment. It's the judgment seat of Christ where everything we've done, thought, think, whatever is put to the test. Will it stand for eternity? I'm hoping to bring some ash to give to God. How much of what I do, say, think, act, how much of it has been to God's glory? Well, He's the judge. But I have the promise, but has passed out of death into life. John 5, 24. According to the very words of the Lord Jesus Christ, Don Thompson has eternal life. He is in the presence of the Lord, enjoying the reward of the inheritance in Jesus Christ for the good works which God prepared for him to live out and do during his temporary journey here on this earth. Therefore, being always of good courage and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We are of good courage, I say, and prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. Paul said it, so I, and Jesus had him write it down, and I just have to believe it. But if there were some way to communicate with Don Thompson right now, he wouldn't want to come back. Why would he want to leave glory? To come back. He says, there are others who are going to preach the word, so listen up. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the free gift of eternal life. You come as you are. In faith, ask Jesus to forgive your sin and give Him first place in your life. If you have questions, ask. Don't leave this place if you have questions. I'm available, I'm available to visit with and any number of men and women here in this room, they would love to talk to somebody about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And Pastor Blake is here to serve you in any way he can. But what does it say in the Scriptures? The Word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith which we are preaching that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes, resulting in salvation. For the Scripture says, whoever believes in Him will not be disappointed. May make that decision today. It's there. It's a free gift. It's been bought and paid for you. Again, you can't earn it. You don't deserve it. Just ask. Dad has a favorite psalm, and it's in the little remembrance folder thing. Psalm 121. A song of a sense. It means when the Jewish people back then were on their way to the temple, they sang as they marched and came into the temple. And here's how it reads. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. 
He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming from this time and coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for who you are. Very God who created this heaven and earth and placed us here for the very purpose that we might bring glory to your name. And we know that we are sinners. We really don't, we don't have to be convinced of that. And yet to come to you is one of the most difficult things. Because we have to die to self. But it's better to die to self than live for you. And when old age comes and infirmity and life isn't going to work here, Father, we thank you that you escort us to heaven to be with you for eternity and to be in your presence that for all eternity we can praise you and even here we praise you and give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. There's going to be a hymn sung and it's number 35 in the hymnal. Shall you know how to get people started? So... Go.
as we go out and we continue to remember Don, that we would know that you hold us as well. And we can always, always look to you. No matter where we're at, no matter what we do, we can look up to thee and know you hold us. And in you we pray. Amen. Now the family will now be headed to the graveside um, to lay Don to rest. But we would like to invite everyone else uh, out for cake and refreshments out to the Veterans Hall, where afterwards the family will join you all then too. Thank you all again for coming today. Thank you.